But you know, if anybody wants to believe that they are the descendants of a primate, they are certainly welcome to do it. I don't know how far they will march that back. You know, through this nation, whole generations of young people are being taught in the public schools there's no God, life evolved by natural processes, they're really just animals in the fight for survival. If you believe that you came from a monkey, doesn't that give you permission to act like one too? If you believe that you came from a monkey, doesn't that give you permission to act like one too? These calls announce the start of a raid into land controlled by their neighbors. Fellow citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. On my orders, coalition forces have begun striking selected targets of military importance to undermine Saddam Hussein's ability to wage war. Командиры будут работать, партизаны и партизаны. Будь те же достойны. Вы ведете войну освободительно, справедливо. In a state of anarchy, there's a constant temptation to invade your neighbors preemptively before they invade you. More recently, Thomas Schelling gives the analogy of a homeowner who hears a rustling in the basement. Being a good American, he has a pistol in the nightstand, pulls out his gun, walks down the stairs, and what does he see but a burglar with a gun in his hand. Now, each one of them is thinking, I don't really want to kill that guy, but he's about to kill me. Maybe I had better shoot him before he shoots me, especially since even if he doesn't want to kill me, he's probably worrying right now that I might kill him before he kills me, and so on. Uh, Hunter-gatherer peoples explicitly go through this uh, train of thought and will often raid their neighbors out of fear of being raided first. When a human being becomes the new prey, and the hunting pack turns on one of its own kind, the savagery of the mob knows no bounds. For the lynchman, the victim becomes a victim, a member of another species, a prey to be destroyed. Several males corner an enemy female. It's a ferocious attack, and she's lucky to escape with her life. This is not normal human aggression. This is a corrupted hunting pack on the prowl, looking for a kill. If you believe that you came from a monkey, doesn't that give you permission to act like one too?
There can be no doubt about our close relationship to these chimpanzees. Our bodies are so similar. The proportions of our limbs or our faces may differ, but otherwise we are very, very similar. The arrangement of our internal organs, the chemistry of our blood, the way our bodies work, all these are almost identical. DNA confirms that. Please, give me the facts. Give me the empirical evidence. Show me the transitional creatures. Many of you may know that a few months ago the genetic code of the chimpanzee was published. Therefore, we can compare our genome to these primate relatives. What do we find? You all know that evolution argues that we share a common ancestor with the great apes. Well, if that's true, there should be genetic similarities, and in fact, there are. But there's something that's really interesting, and that is we have two fewer chromosomes than the other great apes. We have 46, they all have 48. That's very interesting. What must have happened is that one pair of chromosomes must have gotten fused. So we should be able to look at our genome and discover that one of our chromosomes resulted from the fusion of two primate chromosomes. So if, how would we find it? Chromosomes have nifty little markers. They have markers called centromeres, which are DNA sequences that are used to separate them during mitosis, and they have cool little DNA sequences on the end called telomeres. What would happen if a pair of chromosomes got fused? Well, what would happen is the fusion would put telomeres where they don't belong in the center of the chromosome, and the resulting fused chromosome should actually have two centromeres. One of them might become inactivated, but nonetheless, it should still be there. So we can scan our genome, and you know what? If we don't find that chromosome, evolution's in trouble. Well, guess what? It's chromosome number two. Our chromosome number two was formed by the fusion of two primate chromosomes. The precise fusion site has been located at base number 114,455,823, 214,455,838. In other words, within 15 bases. If you believe that you came from a monkey, doesn't that give you permission to act like one too?